Hi everyone, Brian from Sue Generis Brewing here. It is Wednesday, August 2nd, 2023, and it's time for another update on the 50 meter beer project. This is kind of a big update because it's been a few weeks and a lot's happened in that time, but I'll try not to make this too long. Uh, but basically every part of the project had something going on with it over the past couple of weeks. So you might recall in my last video, I harvested the bare barley and I gave it a little bit of extra time to dry inside and then threshed and winnowed it. And I did this using a pretty common method for home uh, barley growers. What I did is I took the heads of the barley that I had collected and I put them into a five gallon bucket. Uh, through this, I put in basically a beater attached to a drill and I used that to knock the kernels off of the hulls. Uh, now, in my case, for the beater, I used a wine degasser to which I attached a couple of um, twist ties or zip ties. But there's a lot of other ways that you can make these. Some people use chain, some people use line cutter line. It's all kind of the same in the end. You're just trying to knock the barley around hard enough that the seeds will come out of the hulls, uh, allowing you to separate your grain from your chaff. To actually separate the grain from the chaff is pretty easy. I set up a tarp outside on a day where there was a bit of wind. I threw in an added fan just to give a little bit of extra air movement. And then I just slowly poured the barley from one bucket to another in front of that fan. And basically the chaff is fairly light. It'll get blown away, uh, but the barley should fall straight down in, into the bucket. And you can see that uh, my yields here were not stellar. Uh, I talked to my cousin who's an actual barley farmer and showed him some pictures and he basically confirmed that my plants were far too close together and they essentially starved each other out. So I'm going to keep probably half of this barley that I harvested here uh, to replant next year and I'm going to have to do a better job of spacing my seeds. It sounds like the row sizing was okay, it's just the space between plants was a little too close. I also harvested the Harrington uh, which was ready about a week and a half after the bear. Uh, the Harrington I decided to harvest in a slightly different manner because the way I harvested the bear was just straight up pain. Uh, so what I did with the Harrington is I just cut it down uh, and then I took the stalks over to the uh, deck and got a beer and cut all the heads off and put those into a bucket. And it took just as long as it took to process the bear barley, but it was a lot less painful. I wasn't out in the sun, I wasn't crouched over, uh, so it was a lot better of a way to do that. Now, I'm sure there are better ways. I've seen on YouTube videos on people actually making, you know, threshing machines that can just deal with it. So if I continue on with this, I might try building something like that in the future. But for a first time minimal investment approach, this method worked really well and it's what I would recommend. So on to the hops. Uh, the hops have had a bit of trouble lately. Uh, we had a couple of real bad storms roll through. Uh, a couple of them even spawned some tornadoes. Uh, and they broke down my lines, so a couple of the hot plants ended up on the ground. Uh, now I was able to kind of restring them, but they were so entangled with each other that I could only do this sort of half raised up uh, thing that I'm showing you here. On the better side though, uh, even though those hops uh, got knocked down, starting to get some nice uh, flower development, which should pretty shortly turn into some cones. So it looks like we're going to get a good yield of hops this year, uh, even though uh, some of those hops have had a pretty rough summer. Of course, the big ticket item this week is the yeast. Uh, if you recall, over a month ago, I set up four wild captures. Uh, one was a jar I placed out in the barley, one was a jar I placed underneath some tomatoes, and then the other two I did object-based captures. One I put some bees into, and the other one I put in some flowers from some herbs. And all of them, except for the tomato capture, grew some nice yeast. Uh, so today I'm planting them out so I can try and get some pure cultures, uh, but just briefly the barley capture uh, has a real nice sort of fruity smell to it. Almost a, a peachy kind of aroma, which is, is kind of unique. And I'm, I'm really hoping I can purify that yeast and its flavor matches its aroma. The bees gave a yeast that just smells like a lager. It's actually surprising how, how sort of just classical beery beer uh, that one smells like. And then the herbs gave something that's very wine-like in aroma. It might have some fusels. I don't know if that one's going to turn out as well. But what I've done today is I used an approach called streak plating to basically dilute these yeast out so I can get single colonies, which I can then grow up and begin testing as potential fermenters. Now, I think in the past I've done a video on this, so if I have, I'll put a, a card up above here if you want to see how that technique is performed. 
Another thing I've done as well is I've been working on my Wild Britannomyces project. It's sort of been going on behind the scenes. And what I've really been working on is trying to develop and optimize a medium that allows me to grow uh, Britannomyces out of soil samples without growing a lot of other contaminating yeasts and other organisms. I think I've got it. So I'm doing an actual sort of full on trial right now. So hopefully those results will be available in September, October, and I'll be able to tell you more about it then. Anyways, that's the update. Uh, things are going relatively well. Barley yields maybe aren't quite where I want them. The hobs have had a rough time, but uh, I think everything's coming together and we're going to end up um, with at least a small batch of beer made entirely off the property at the end of the summer. Uh, so with that, uh, have a great day and we'll see you in the next update.